Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. We have over 30 people who have already logged in, so I think we're going to go ahead and get started because we have a lot to cover. Um, I hope everyone is doing well and, and staying healthy. My name is Valdete Berisha, and I manage the FinDev Gateway, CGAP's independent knowledge sharing platform for financial inclusion. Um, before we begin, I would like to just quickly explain how this webinar will work. I hope everybody can hear me well. So for this webinar, the attendee microphones will remain muted during the entire session. Uh, we want to make sure that we receive your questions, however. So if you'd like to ask a question, please use the chat box on the right-hand side of the WebEx session. Um, you can submit your question at any time during the presentation. And to ensure that your question is seen by the moderator, myself, uh, please select the All Participants um, option from the drop-down menu because that's the only way I'll, I'll make sure to, I, I will see the question will actually reach me. Um, so the webinar will be recorded and we'll share the recording and the presentation with you after the webinar. So here's what we plan to share with you today. I'm going to start off by highlighting some of the new features and additions to our newly redesigned FinDev Gateway, um, including our new COVID-19 resource hub, which we just launched. Then we'll move to my colleague, Abby Augusta, who is the editor responsible for the English FinDev Gateway blog and topic pages. Abby also supports the Spanish FinDev Gateway. Abby will tell us a little bit about FinDev's outreach and users. She will also share some tips for contributing to the FinDev webinar and blogs. Um, then we'll move to my colleague, Gaia Manukian, who is responsible for curating content for the English-speaking audience of the FinDev Gateway. She also manages our outreach partnerships. Uh, Gaia will walk us through the new website, and she will focus on showing the types of content that we have um, on the website and how you can access it and how you can submit um, resources. Um, I can see some comments saying that there's a huge echo um, on the sound. I'm not sure if it's just one person, but if, um, if anyone is having issues hearing me well, please type in the chat box and we'll figure out if it's just uh, somebody's computer or if it's an overall issue. Um, but thanks for the feedback. Um, so once Abby and Gaia share um, on the English site, we will then move to um, our regional editors. As you know, um, FinDev Gateway is available in French, Spanish, and Arabic as well. And we have, these are all regional platforms. Uh, we have editors for each of the platforms that focus on sharing resources relevant, most relevant to the regional audiences. For example, Miranda Bechara um, manages our Arabic FinDev site, and she focuses on developing and curating content for the Arab-speaking audience. Um, then Mariana Martinez um, is the editor for the Spanish um, FinDev and she focuses on the audience in Latin America and Caribbean. And Anouj Bezelg is the French editor who focuses on developing and curating content for the francophone audience of FinDev Gateway um, around the world, but mostly focusing on Sub-Saharan Africa. So here is how, how the website looked before. And um, I'm sharing this because a lot, m many of you are m maybe new users. Um, and this is the new website. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So why did we redesign? Um, the aim of the redesign was to increase the flexibility of, the, of how we share content, also enable our users to easily navigate it, but also to make it easier for us. Uh, to manage and update the platform, given, given that it's a multilingual platform, sometimes it can be a very complex task. Um, so what did we add? Um, obviously, the most relevant section right now is our new uh, COVID-19 resource hub. Um, as we know, the coronavirus pandemic is the biggest story on the planet right now. And every day, hundreds of 
news articles, email messages, and text messages on this topic flood the internet and our inboxes. And honestly, it can be overwhelming sometimes to, to try to sort through this information and, and pick what's the most relevant for our work. Uh, that's why we launched COVID-19 Resource Hub in order to help the financial inclusion community with this large volume of information. Um, and how do we do that? We usually um, curate content that is most relevant for our audience and then presented on this section of the website. Um, let's, let me start by just um, showing you the, so this is how the, our new section looks like. Um, and this is, it includes new, newest publications, news and events, um, but more than that, uh, we have launched a FinDev discussion on the FinDev blog where we're asking organizations to share how the uh, pandemic is affecting their work. We've already received quite a few comments and they keep coming in. So we encourage you to um, explore this section of our site and, and post and share with us so that the entire community can learn more about how you're being affected and how you are responding to the, to the pandemic. Um, also, CGAP offers a collection page uh, pulling together resources on um, previous crises and what lessons can we learn that could be relevant for how we address the, the challenges that we face in, in this pandemic. Um, and then we also put together a data tracker. As, as you know, there's many new data trackers that are coming up every day. Um, and um, each one focuses on one particular aspect of tracking responses to the COVID-19 from the sector. Um, some of them actually track the same thing. So we wanted to have one place where users can go to and see what are these new trackers, where can they find them, and what are they tracking? Because information is really important. There's a there's a lot of information, but sometimes it's not well organized. So we wanted to bring this all into one place so that um, our users don't have to struggle to find it. So we'll keep updating these pages on a regular basis. Um, the other page that we created was we wanted to, sh to have a list of all organizations who have created their own resource hubs on their websites. Uh, some organizations have started blog series or event series that are quite relevant for our audience. So we wanted to, um, to give our users an easy way for them to go to a page and see what other organizations are producing content on the topic and how they can access it. So if your organization has already created a space uh, like that on your site, please get in touch with us um, to our Contact Us page and share the resources and we'll, we'll uh, see if they're appropriate to include in our in the in the page. Uh, we have also launched our weekly updates. So, in in this um, type of of content that we provide, we we are pulling together different resources into one place, and we will be emailing um, our list once a week, um, so that you can see what are the, the latest news publications, blog posts, opinion pieces, and data sources that are added um, by different organizations on FinDev Gateway and beyond. Um, so, so on the COVID-19 Resource Hub, you can also, as I showed you quickly, find the uh, latest publications, events, and news. And you can, um, you can also sort through those by region, um, and um, I think region top topic, obviously, it's going to be COVID-19, but uh, country as well. So if you'd like to know more about it, you can um, visit the, the page and you can read about these different uh, types of content we are covering on this space under the overview tab of the COVID-19 resource hub. So, we're hoping that all of you will, um, will contribute to this space, uh, both by providing content, but also will find it useful to, to um, inform your work 
that you're doing, and, and hopefully it will make your research a little bit easier. Um, so how can you get to our resource hub? Um, obviously, you can do that from our homepage by clicking on topics. It's one of the featured topics. If you also just scroll down our homepage, you'll find it under our trending topics uh, section. So these are the two main ways you can access it. And you can also access it from different content types that we're featuring throughout the site by just going to our resource, uh, COVID-19 resource page. Um, so the, the next uh, new feature that I wanted to quickly share with you is um, our communities of practice space. We, we have greatly improved the way in which our communities of practice that we host on FinDev, both Finequity and Pago Perform, can present their content for their users. And um, I wanted to also show that right now, for example, if you go on, on our Finequity community of practice page, you'll see that you can now sort uh, the content that communities of practice offer by the blogs, events, resources, and you can learn more about the COP. Um, one of the things that you can find on Finequity Community of Practice uh, that is highly relevant today is the, um, the page where they're also trying to pull resources together that are most relevant for women's financial inclusion and women's financial resiliency in the time of COVID-19. Um, so I encourage you to, to check out this page. You can also join their conversation, uh, the discussion that they're hosting on uh, dgroups. So everything can be accessed through our community tab, which I just showed. So if you go to on the homepage under community, you'll see um, Finequity there, and you can, you can access all those resources from there. And the last but not least, this is also a new feature on our site, is the new data landing page. And uh, we created this because we realized that there's so many useful data sets out, out there, but there was, no, not a, there, there was no singular place where you could go to and, and see what's available and sort through um, by region or um, country and topic. So we created this data landing page and we've curated um, a list of, of key data sets that are available for financial inclusion and microfinance. So if you know of additional data sets that we haven't included here, please get in touch with us and we'll be happy to consider including them um, on this page. So with that, I'm going to pass the microphone over to my colleague, Abby, who will talk a little bit of, uh, about our uh, outreach and the FinDev users. Abby. Great. Thank you, Valdete. Uh, my name is Abby. And yes, I wanted to just share a little bit about who our audience is so that you know when you share content on FinDev Gateway, you know who you're reaching. Uh, in terms of website traffic, uh, we get about a million website views each year, and that's across the four language sites in English, French, Spanish, and Arabic. And you can see how that breaks down in terms of sessions and users across the four sites here. Um, we also are very active on social media. Uh, and we also have a biweekly newsletter that we send out called the FinDev Gateway Exchange. And we have about 20,000 subscribers to that newsletter across the four language sites. And we have on Twitter almost 13,000 followers on LinkedIn, 16,000 followers, and on Facebook, over 7,000. So be sure to follow us, and that's another way that we share a lot of the content that we produce and, and share on the site. Uh, where are our users coming from? So for the English site, as you can see, the biggest chunk of them come from Asia, and within Asia, our top country where we get visits from is India. Um, and then after Asia, the, we have Africa, Americas, and Europe, where our users come from. And then, of course, for the regional sites, they focus, obviously, on their region. The Spanish site uh, has users mostly from Latin America, 
in the Caribbean. Uh, the French site focuses on Francophone countries, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa, and the Arabic site, of course, um, primarily from Middle East and North Africa. And then where do our users come from in terms of type of institution? So the biggest group uh, of users are work at financial service providers. So these are MFIs, commercial banks, cooperatives. And then the next group of 20% are uh, consultants. So often these are working with FSPs to support them, provide technical assistance, et cetera. And then we have researchers with 15%, NGOs, 12%, and then a smaller group that are come from fintechs and donors and investors. So this audience, these users, what kind of content are they looking for? Um, by far the biggest uh, portion of, of content that they are viewing on our site are our publications, blog, and webinar. So that is over half of our page views go to those types of content, which is you know where the most substance is found in those types of content. And then almost evenly distributed, people are also looking, of course, for jobs and news and events. And then the rest of our page views go to other types of content, which can include uh, country pages, region pages, uh, and topic pages and other content that we have. And to talk a little bit more about um, the content that we have on the site, I'm going to hand over the presentation now to my colleague, Gaia. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Abby. And um, now that Valbete and Abby spoke about the, the value that FINDEF plays and the role uh, FINDEF Gateway plays in the financial inclusion sector, I wanted to focus a little bit about how you can interact with our site and uh, whether it is submitting content or uh, exploring it. So on average, we add about 3,000 publications, news, jobs, and events to FINDEF Gateway, and about 70% of that is submitted to us by our users, and the rest we curate ourselves. So regardless whether content is being submitted or uh, curated, there is a, a very selective process that goes into it. We're very careful about what is added to FINDEF. Obviously, uh, we pay a lot of attention to quality, the source, and of course, relevance to our audience. Before I go further, I'm going to quickly share my screen to help you navigate the site. Many of you who are familiar with it know that if you are looking to explore content, you will go right under Explore. See what I did there? Um, so when you hold your hover over Explore, you will know the different content pieces that we have available. Data is the new one that I spoke about. But I'm going to take you to our publications page to uh, give you an overview with and maybe even display how content is being submitted. In the publications page, our editors pick. This section is uh, curated by um, our editors. Uh, we give a lot of importance to relevance and timeliness of content that is whether submitted to us or uh, if we curate. And then if you go a little bit down, uh, you will see that uh, our library of publications allows you to really easily access content to do research, whether it's on a topic or a country or a region. So you can select South Asia, and that's all the content that will come up. And then you can further narrow it down by type of publication and, uh, and topic. Um, and this is quite user-friendly if you have over 30 topics on, on our platform. Um, if you are someone who's looking to um, submit content to us, uh, and if you are a regular on FINDEF, I recommend you to um, bookmark this page because this is where, this is the page from which you can access to all our submission forms. Um, so if you're a lot of common mistakes are people submitting a content type instead of a publication form, they fill out an announcement or the news form that we have here. So um, if you have this page, it's a little easier to access and to figure out what you wish to do. 
if you're not sure whether your content is something that uh, is relevant for us and we will accept, you can look at our guidelines. We have certain uh, guidelines that um, explain what types uh, and what topics uh, of content FINDA uh, accepts. So um, I will not go into detail on all of this, but um, you know that we're just a short email away. If you have any questions, please reach us out if you cannot make a decision whether your content is relevant or not. Uh, the process is identical for all of our language sites. So if you're submitting a publication in French, more than likely you will receive an email back from us saying that uh, we cannot uh, process, we cannot continue uh, editing your content on this site, you will need to go to our French gateway to make sure that the French editor receives the submission. And the process uh, that I described uh, is identical for all of the sites. And um, the next thing that I want to go over very quickly is our submission form. Uh, we um, have simplified the process as well that I mentioned in the very beginning. One of the things we removed is the requirement to uh, sign in or to create an account on Findev uh, to make it available to a wider masses. So you don't have to do that. You easily land on this page, submit a bit of information about you. This is very important so that we have a way to get back to you if your content is being rejected or, um, or if there is something missing and we need additional information. In any case, we are a great communicators and we're going to um, reach out to you uh, whether we don't accept your content or do. Um, because I mentioned in the beginning that some of the reasons why your publication may be refused uh, is because either it doesn't meet our quality standards or it's not relevant uh, uh, for financial inclusion audience. So the next section uh, requests you to submit a bit of information about the publication. Um, this is not written in stone. Whatever you submit here may and most likely will be edited because we have certain guidelines uh, for publishing. Uh, if you are not happy with the final product, with the way your content is published, again, it's not written in stone. We'll be happy to work with you to make sure that we're both happy with uh, how it's displayed. So once you submit it, we will receive it, and it takes a maximum of three days. And any of you who have interacted with us know that we're very quick, uh, especially replying to inquiries, but for publishing, uh, no more than three days if we're extremely busy. I think that's all. If there are any questions, anything specific you would like to know, I would be happy to respond at the end of this presentation. Thanks, back to you, Abby. Thank you, Gaia. Um, let me take the, the presentation. Um, so now, after Gaia has talked about all the different content types that we have and how you can submit, I wanted to just share a little bit about other ways that you can engage and connect with our audience. We have a FinDev blog and our webinar series, which are important spaces that FINDEV Gateway provides for the financial inclusion and microfinance community to connect and share experiences, ideas, lessons learned, et cetera, in different formats. So for our blog, uh, in 2019, we had over 70 different blog contributors across the four sites. Um, and blog contributors are organizations and individuals who are financial inclusion practitioners around the world who want to share what they've been working on, what has worked for them or what hasn't, interesting findings from research they've been doing, insights, et cetera. If you're interested in being one of these contributors and writing for the FINDEV blog, you can submit a proposal to us summarizing your idea. And you'll see across the site, see if you look at the top of this page, you'll see buttons that say write for FINDEV. So on, every, on the blog page and on every blog post, you'll find that little button that says write for FINDEV, and that will take you to our guidelines for writing for the blog and information on how you can submit your proposal. Uh, what are the criteria for publishing a blog post? Uh, well, I'd say our main criteria is relevance. You know, we talked a little bit about who our audience is, 
they're financial inclusion, microfinance practitioners, and we want to make sure to provide content for them that is useful, relevant, interesting, and especially actionable for them. You know, practical information that they can learn from and apply to their own work. Um, besides that, we also really aim to represent a wide variety of voices on the blog. This is a blog for the community, and so we try to cover a broad range of topics, types of organizations, and geographies. Uh, another criteria, of course, is it should be well written, ideally in a conversational, engaging tone that readers can relate to. Um, but we also, you know, try to take into account that for many of our readers, English is not their first language. And so if we see that their blog proposal has potential, there's an interesting idea, important insights in there, then we'll try to work with them to edit it and get it to a polished final product that we can publish. And of course, for the regional sites, you know, it's the same process. You would get in touch with the editor for each site to share what your blog proposal is and work with those editors to, to finish it. And then for webinars, um, we generally partner with an organization that has come to us with a proposal for a topic that they've been working on and that they'd like to share with the broader community. Uh, usually they come with a proposal for who the panelists should be and an outline, and then we work with them to prepare and organize the webinar. So we review and format the presentation, set up a webinar page on our site, do marketing to get people to register, and host it on our WebEx platform. So we generally just coordinate the whole process. Um, here on this slide are a couple of examples of webinars that we've hosted in the past year. So a variety of different topics. We've partnered with Mix uh, to, to talk about their most recent data initiatives. We partnered with Savings at the Frontier to, to present on tools for reaching remote clients. We also had a webinar series of three webinars on digital transformation, which was quite popular. And we also had a couple webinars on customer centricity and how that can be applied within FSPs and a number of other topics that we've covered in the year. Um, our webinars attract an average of about 170 participants uh, across the language sites, and especially our Spanish webinars have proven to be quite popular. And so now I will. Uh, hand the presentation over to Mariana to talk a bit more about the Spanish uh, Portal FinDev. Thank you, Abby. Indeed, in 2019, the Spanish FinDev platform, we did uh, 11 special webinars where we shared ideas, research, and lessons learned from leading microfinance and financial inclusion experts in Latin America and the Caribbean. On average, we had 516 registered events and 245 attendees per session. We even reached a, a record high of 719 registered and 349 attendees in one of the three last webinars we conducted jointly with the IFC. These numbers are really high for the sector, showing that there is a demand for this type of knowledge sharing opportunities. And well, who attends our webinars? Most of the attendees are from, uh, from the LAC region in middle upper management positions in MFIs, banks, fintech companies, and NGOs. Um, why these webinars were so successful? I would say it's not only because the high number of attendees, but also because the main interaction, interactions that happen during the webinar and after the webinar. For example, the meaningful conversations between colleagues in the webinar chat box, the high number of comments in our webinar page, the high number of questions the speaker received during and after the webinar via email. Some, even, some colleagues even get together with the teams to watch the webinar and learn. I think they are also successful because of the selection of the topi topics that are relevant for the LAC region. Most of our webinar in 2019 were focused on digital transformation in the region, and also because the selection of the right speakers and partners to do it. In, the, in this slide, um, you can see an example of the key organizations in the LAC region that we partnered with for the uh, 2019 webinar and some of the speakers. And I would say that the IFC was one of the key partners of the year. In fact, um, in fact, we will have a, a new webinar coming up in April 22nd uh, with the IFC, where we will discuss the strategies for open banking in, in, the, in Latin America. 
Uh, we also we have another webinar uh, with, jointly with Finequity ALC. Valdete mentioned about the recent launch of the Finequity platform. Finequity ALC is a platform for, for the Latin American region and in Spanish. The webinar, the, our upcoming webinar, um, will be about what are we doing to improve financial inclusion of women in Latin America and what we can do it to do it better. I encourage all of you to sign to register for the webinar in our platform. One of the questions that we always receive is, is we are a translation of the English site. And in fact, we definitely are not a translation of the English site. We produce and create content in Spanish tailored to the needs and interests of the Spanish Latin American audience. We only translate where the content is relevant for our audience. Traffic to the site, uh, to the Spanish site, can mainly from the LAC region. The three top countries are Mexico, Peru, and Colombia. Then we have a mix of the rest of the countries in the region, plus the United States and Spain. One new feature of our new redesigned uh, uh, platform are the regional pages and country profile pages. You can see in this slide just a snapshot of our Latin American and Caribbean landing page. One new element that we now uh, we now have is the possibility of displaying financial inclusion data. You can see here three graphs with that data from LAC on percentage of adults with an account, gender gap, and use of digital uh, payments coming from the global FinTech data. In fact, you can find this data graph also in each of the other sites in English, in French, and in Arabic. Um, Portal FinDev partnered with key organizations in each country to populate the country profile pages with relevant content, blogs, publications, events, webinars, and to help uh, colleagues like you to keep updated with the microfinance and financial inclusion sector. One example that I can think of is the country profile of Peru, uh, for which we partnered with COPEME, a network of MFI institutions in, in Peru, and IPE, which is an Instituto de Estudios Peruanos, a think tank in Peru. All of that to you know to con to be uh, to have all the relevant content for the for the region. Uh, another example example of the tailored knowledge product we produce for the LAC uh, audience is the regional COVID-19 hub. How are we using the Spanish platform to share resources on COVID-19? Well, we have created a regional hub to share experience, lessons learned, and ideas on how to be overcome the, this pandemic. We open a discussion forum, forum similar to the English one that Valeta described before, but we focus on how different organizations in the LAC region are dealing with this pandemic. Right now, there is a ton of content available in English and not so much in Spanish, or if it exists, it's not centralized in, in one place. We are here to fill in uh, that gap. We would like to provide a space for Spanish-speaking colleagues to express themselves and share ideas and experience from past crises. And we have also produced guides in Spanish, the Spanish with links to available data and publication resources that could be used for the sector. Also, the Hub is a place where you can find the latest blogs written by the leading microfinance and financial inclusion experts in LAC, all in one place. So if you have ideas, resources, I invite you to share it with us through the platform or by contacting us via email. In fact, I work very closely with my colleagues Miranda and Anush from the Arabic and French site to make sure that we share the experience of colleagues in different uh, regions and make sure that we can learn from each other. And um, we would like to head over Miranda with my colleague Miranda so she can show us the Arabic hub on COVID-19. Thank you very much, Mariana. Um, so, as Mariana mentioned, and uh, my colleagues, um, most of the new features on the FinDev Gateway are also available uh, on the Arabic FinDev Gateway. And here I'm sharing some of the resources we have on our regional hub. Um, uh, as Mariana mentioned, also we have a discussion forum. Uh, we are having um, learning from previous crises, tracking global data so resources. We're trying to provide as much resources that are available in, uh, in Arabic. But also, if not available in, in Arabic, we provide some translation. Uh, in our news and online events, we provide also latest news, not only from the global sphere, but also from uh, the region and how different organizations and institutions and regulatory authorities are dealing with uh, the challenge of COVID-19 and responding to the crisis. Uh, we are um, the most comprehensive online resource on financial inclusion for the Arab uh, region and in Arabic. 
Uh, we host blog series, um, publications, uh, expert interviews. We provide regional coverage for key events. Uh, we also conduct webinars in Arabic. Uh, we share experiences between peers. And um, as mentioned, uh, we are not only uh, a translation, so we are trying really to provide uh, relevant regional content in partnership with different kinds of partners that are working at the regional level as well as at the country level and also global institutions who have programs uh, and um, projects and activities related to financial inclusion and microfinance in the Arab region. And we work closely with regional networks like Sanabel and national networks at the country level, like in Yemen, uh, in Jordan, in Egypt, to just name a few. So uh, our main focus is really to develop and create content for the Arabic user. Um, as many of you know, uh, especially those who are uh, Arabic speakers, Arabic content is a challenge. Nevertheless, we managed to create original content, like we invite uh, really leading experts from the region to write blog uh, posts in Arabic. Uh, we do translate content, but we do not translate full publications. For, so for example, I will just give a quick example. If uh, there is an institution that has um, a, a paper or a study that came out uh, that is relevant for the region, but they don't have uh, the resources or the know-how to translate it into Arabic, we offer them that they could contribute a blog, for example, a blog post to write about this uh, publication or study, and we will provide this blog in Arabic and then link to the study, whether it's in English or in French, so the audience, the Arabic audience, could have access to it. We also could recommend uh, quality translators that we work with, and uh, if some institutions are interested in having uh, such content translated, the full content translated into Arabic. As I said, we work uh, in the Arab region and the top countries that visit the Arabic gateway, uh, we have users the top from Egypt, uh, Morocco, Jordan, Saudi Arabia and Sudan. Uh, as I mentioned also, we develop partnership with those leading organizations, those countries. Um, I'm, I didn't put here uh, a screenshot of our uh, data page as well as my colleagues because also this information is available on the Arabic site. So I encourage you to um, visit our Arabic site to uh, have the latest data on financial inclusion. We try also to source regional data from uh, institutions working uh, on a regional level and provide uh, data specifically for the Arab region as well as news and resources about regional trending topics. Um, as you can imagine, we, um, we also have uh, social media channels uh, um, on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook that we try to interact with the different actors uh, for the Arab region, as well as a monthly newsletter where we uh, communicate our latest content. And we collaborate very closely with the French uh, FinDev Gateway because we are part of the region and are the North African countries. And uh, a lot of resources are available in French and French is kind of an official language in those countries. So we closely collaborate with our um, French editor, uh, Anouche, that I will pass the baton to to speak more about the French uh, Gateway. And uh, please do not hesitate if you have any questions to reach out uh, to, to us. And if you are interested in having more uh, of content available for the Arabic speaking um, uh, audience, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. So thank you very much, Miranda. Uh, as Miranda said, our main focus is Francophone Africa, so West Africa and Central Africa. But we also cover the MENA region. So let me introduce uh, Porta Findev. Why a platform in French? Uh, because financial inclusion in Francophone countries is part of the daily life of many smallholders, micro-entrepreneurs, women, and many more. And more than that, in the region, financial inclusion is still a huge stake. Indeed, uh, only 43% of adults have an account in Sub-Saharan Africa. There are many original quality content that are produced in French by many organizations. Uh, that is why Portail FinDev uh, is today a hub to find information, share lessons, and foster discussions between um, practitioners in Africa and uh, in Europe. So who are our users and where do they come from? 
In 2019, we recorded about uh, 140,000 uh, sessions on our website. So these visitors, they come from many uh, different countries in Africa, Europe, and North America. Uh, in our top 10 countries per visitors, uh, we have countries like Senegal, um, Morocco, France, Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, Burkina Faso, among others. And all these countries, uh, financial inclusion and microfinance face different problematics. So how do we engage with our users in such a variety of contexts? Well, there are a few ways. Um, first, uh, our bi-weekly newsletter, bi-monthly newsletter, sorry, that gathers all the latest blogs and publications uh, content that were shared on the website. Secondly, every month we publish several blogs, so original blogs, uh, that were produced uh, originally in French or translated if they are really relevant for the region. So um, uh, these blogs uh, are on burning issues such as digital finance, fintech, environment, microentrepreneurs. Um, it's a good way to stay up to date and keep find so finding solutions to engage uh, and provide better financial services in Africa. In the last month, we were really pleased to publish articles contributed by major organizations from the industry, such as ADA, the main network, Running to the Capital Foundation, Blue of Heart, among others. Other than that, uh, we uh, organized webinars, so, so, such as uh, over platforms. Our next webinar will be about digitalization and financial inclusion, and it will take place before the summer. So stay tuned on our newsletter and our, on our social media to know the exact date. Last but not least, uh, we are also partnering with key events in the region. The last event we attended was the SAM, so the African Microfinance Week, last October in Burkina Faso. A great opportunity to connect with the community and uh, discuss um, so I would like to take a minute to present you our new regional page. So my colleague Mariana introduced it for the LAC region. This one is for uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and uh, countries from the area. So if you are looking for data or resources, uh, this is the place to be. Uh, it will give you a snapshot on the financial inclusion landscape of the region with the latest data on account ownership, gender gap, and use of financial or digital finance. So I invite you to have a look at our regional page. So concretely, how do you share your resources on Portal Findex? Our requirements are pretty much the same across all sites, and my colleague Gaia explained it very well. Um, we only accept content in French or training and events that will be delivered in French. So please don't hesitate to get in touch with us if there is any content that you would like to post or if you would like to share your lessons and knowledge via a webinar or on a blog. We will be really happy to hear from you and to assist you uh, on the website. To conclude, I would like to say a word about the way you can use the COVID-19 hub on Portail Sindev. So Africa was relatively, relatively spared so far, but the virus is quickly spreading. What will be the consequences in the region on the industry, the MFIs and their clients? We don't know yet, so that is why we quickly adapted and opened a hub on Portail Sindev. So every day we post news relevant for the region, as well as publication, blog posts, guides, online events related to the COVID-19. I invite you to have a look at the content we already display. Stay tuned as more will come, including our finder's guide to data tracking the global response to COVID-19. So if you're an MFI, an MSP, an investor operating in Africa, and you are preoccupied by the COVID-19, we invite you to get in touch directly with us. Uh, we will be happy to hear from you and uh, help you to share your experience your fears and your challenges with the rest of the community. This is a situation that is changing constantly and quickly. That's why we are committed to provide you the latest information on the pandemic impact on the sector. So thank you very much uh, for your attention and uh, let's keep in touch on Portail Sindev. Thank you very much, Anoush. Um, that was very helpful. 
Um, so just to reemphasize really the, the great value that Pindar Gateway brings is this aspect um, of the regional sites in different languages that we have and the way we work together to, um, to find out what's going in, in different regions and to, to have a strategy behind how we present then knowledge resources to our different audiences. So I, I would really encourage you to take a look at, at these um, platforms and share them with your partners and, and um, members that, you're, um, that may be located in different parts of the world where they may not be English speakers. I think they would be um, quite valuable resources. Um, you can access them. We'll provide the list of links at the end of the webinar in the in the PowerPoint. But you can also just go on the on the English Pindar Gateway site, and there will be uh, language links throughout the site on the home page at the top um, about the main navigation. And as you are um, you know exploring different types of content and pages. We usually have links to take you to the same section of the website in a different language. So please use those uh, different uh, features. So I am going to start. There's a few questions that have come in, and I'm going to start by um, just reading them out from the first one. And one of the first questions was, um, can any organization working on financial inclusion reach out to host a webinar on the FinDev network? Or will this require prior partnership conversations or separate partnerships with existing partners? Um, I'm going to respond to this question because I think it's it's one of the uh, one of the most interesting features of our of our platform. Um, the the webinars obviously are in in pretty high demand based on the uh, attendance and also interest from other organizations to host them to co-host them with us. Uh, but they do take a lot of resources and time to put together uh, webinars that, that are really useful and add value. So, so we, we are very selective when it comes to um, what webinars we host, and, and that's partly because we have limited resources, so we have to prioritize. So what we are looking for when, when we decide to partner with an organization to co-host a webinar is, is the topic relevant for our audience? Is it timely? Who is the audience you're trying to reach? And, and is the webinar the best way to do it? Um, is it a panel discussion, or are you looking to um, share recent research from a publication you've just published? Um, and then also just the logistics. How does our schedule look like? Do we have other webinars that are in the pipeline? Um, we don't host more than one webinar a month usually. Um, and you know what language you're going to deliver the webinar. So usually we ask that you send us an email briefly describing the idea, and then we get in touch to um, through a phone call and we discuss and, and try to find out more about your idea and and help you um, maybe if it's not something that we wanted to to present in a form of webinar, it may be a good idea to have a blog post or you know, to, to disseminate this information that you're trying to disseminate in other forms. So we'll, we're always open to having conversations. We can't always guarantee that we will host a webinar. I think we just have to kind of consider all those factors that go in, into the decision-making process. But we, we are open to receiving um, ideas from others, and, and we're open to um, getting in touch with you. The next question I have is, um, is it data? So I, I think it's a question about the data where our data landing page. And um, it says, is the data available in FinDev similar to that, that data available in Mixed Market and the World Bank? So I'm assuming the question is, is the data the same? So the mixed data that we have presented on the, mix, on the FinDev gateway, is that the same? data that you can find on the mixed market site or World Bank. Actually, the, the mixed market data now has moved to the World Bank. So it's being hosted by the World Bank. FinDev Gateway doesn't host data. So whatever data source you see listed on our landing page, it's just another way for you to access that data set that is hosted somewhere else. For example, for the mixed market data, it's, um, it's a way for you to 
to it's a way for us to surface that on our FinDev site. And for, when you when you click, you go to the you actually land on the World Bank uh, web page. So the data is the same. Uh, we're just curating the list of data sets that are available so that um, you're aware what's what's available, and and we take you to the relevant site. I hope that answers your question. Uh, the next question is, do you provide any support to microfinance researchers, apart from providing a platform for publication? Um, without knowing the specifics of the question, what kind of support? Um, we, don't, we don't provide financial support for researchers because we, we don't play that role and we don't have those kinds of resources. Our role is to really provide a platform for users for professionals working in microfinance and financial inclusion to share what they're doing, to share knowledge, to share their research, and, and also to enable them to share lessons, what they're learning in the sector, what's working, what's not working. Um, the researchers find FinDev Gateway very useful, obviously, because um, you know, it allows, it gives you access to a huge um, library of resources. We have over 10,000 publications we host on the on the website across four different sites um, and and you can sort them and filter them through topics region country so I think it's it's a it's a nice way if you want to find relevant content I think one of the value adds um, that we bring is that this is not just a dump of resources um, our library our publications page um, is a highly curated um, section of our website. So every single publication goes through the hands of one of our editors. So it goes through, a model, it's, it's submitted or it's curated directly by a FinDev editor. Once it's submitted by an organization, it goes through the, it goes to our editor. Uh, the editor reviews the relevance and, um, and the, whether it fits our guidelines, whether it meets the minimum quality standards. We don't do peer reviews or, or technical reviews of publications, but we, we try to um, filter out um, or, or we try to look at just general quality and presentation of the document and, and to some extent do a little bit of due diligence when, when the author, as Gaia said, is not affiliated with any organization want to make sure that just the, the, there's authority behind what's being written. That way, it's easier for a researcher to, to find out whether it's um, something that they want to use in their research or not. Um, this one I'm going to ask Abby to answer. It's about, is the blog feature interactive? Or actually, I'm not, I'm not sure. Maybe I can. <laughs> I can answer that. Um, you know, we just relaunched our our website but and so Abby, do you want to read the question just so that everybody knows? So I, I'm just going to read it quickly. So is the blog feature interactive? I think the question is asking whether if you write a blog post on a topic, will the will the author be informed when someone else contributes to that blog topic, I guess through a comment, uh, or will I need to return to the blog topic to see if there have been any debate or on, on my comment. So basically it's about the comment section and how it works. Right, yeah. Right now, you know, we have our comment section available for people to, come on, to comment on blogs and you can reply to a comment. As of right now, you know, we just recently relaunched the site. Um, we, we don't have uh, a notification ability yet um, to notify you if, you know, if a someone responded to your comment, but we haven't identified that as something that we would like to add as an enhancement. So now that we've done the whole process of redesign and, and launching, we, we hope to work on that. Right now, you would have to go back to the, to the blog post um, and see. And you know, we try to, if the discussion is really active, we try to, um, when we can, get in touch with people to let them know someone has responded to your comment if you want to go in and, and join the discussion. Um, but we hope to make that automated in the in the near future. Thank you, Abby. Um, the uh, another question I have is from Lama, who's asking, 
if there is any study yet in any language on the impact of COVID-19 on financial inclusion challenges and opportunities. Um, I would encourage you to go to our COVID-19 resource hub and check out the publication section. That's where we're going to update um, that section with any new publication that is coming out. Um, as, as far as we know, um, it's still pretty early to have a publication that focuses on the impact of COVID-19 on financial inclusion um, because, quite honestly, it's still early. I think all organizations are, are at an information gathering stage, um, but I, I expect there will be some. Um, I would encourage you to take a look at CGAP's collection page, which offers um, some resources that were developed or publications that came out in the past um, that dealt with some sort of crises and the role of microfinance institutions um, in those crises or how those crises impacted the sector, microfinance institutions and in general others uh, working in financial inclusion. Like there, there's um, a lot of interesting publications um, on the Ebola crisis um, and, that, and how uh, MFIs responded to that and recovered from it. And then there's, uh, some, there's some publications about um, the impact of the global financial crisis um, on MFIs. So I would, I would encourage you, you can, you can access the CGAP collection page through the FinDev site, or you can just go actually on cgap.org and you can, um, you can see it featured there. So if you're looking for those kinds of you know, impact studies, you'll be able to find them there. And then hopefully, um, as we get more information, CGAP and other organizations will, will start making those, uh, the, those data and findings public um, to different publications. So um, how can I get in touch? So this is the next question. How can I get in touch with to speak or learn more about your suggestion on who I may partner with in extending emergency financing for inclusive fintech startup in Africa? Uh, so I am not sure. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if you're looking to partner with anyone um, in, in, a, in a region. Um, if it's, if it's a, in Francophone Africa, obviously, you know, you're welcome to contact Anoush. Um, she might have some ideas. If it's um, in other parts of the world, um, we have each editor's name listed and which region they're um, responsible for. The, um, uh, Abby, Gaia, and myself focus on the global FinDev gateway, which serves the global audience and kind of have a broad, broad overview of Asia and, and the English-speaking Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, you're welcome to get in touch with any of us, and, and uh, we can direct you, uh, we can try to direct you to the right person if we're not the right people. Uh, we generally, um, you know, we're, we're open to share any information we have or we can uh, be useful. Um, so the next question, actually, I think that's pretty much it. The others are more or less comments, unless the chat box is not necessarily the most user-friendly um, section of WebEx. So I think I, I think we've we'll come to the end. So this was very. Um, I'm, I'm really pleased that you could join. Um, before you go, I would um, like to ask you to take this poll and just, it's a brief survey that uh, tells us how we did. Um, and if you found this presentation relevant, it really allows us to go back and, and reassess um, how we do our webinars in, in the future and, and make improvements. So please uh, take a quick uh, minute and just fill out the survey. And in terms of our next steps, um, we will email the webinar recording and related materials, as, as we said, as soon as possible. 
hopefully no later than tomorrow. Um, and if you have additional questions that we haven't answered during this webinar, please feel free to get in touch with us. There's so many different ways to do that um, from our website, but we've also listed our main contact um, email addresses here. These emails are monitored uh, daily, so it's um, it's not like you, you send an email and um, it lands in an abyss, <laughs> which is sometimes what one might feel when there's no name attached to it, but these are really monitored emails. Um, and then we also have, um, you know, our websites in different languages that you can visit, um, and, and the URLs are, are provided all here and will be sent to you through this presentation. But you, as I said, you can, you can access our regional sites from the English site um, anywhere. So once again, thank you very much and um, have a good day or a good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you are. And uh, we hope to see you back and we hope you stay well. Thank you.